We can now move on to the visual tools that are cross-case uh, visual tools, or at least cross-case capable. And what that means is that we can include more than one document in these visualizations, as opposed to in the document portrait and the code line browser, which focus on a specific single document. The first one we're going to look at is the code matrix browser. And to start the code matrix browser, I can either uh, activate documents and codes ahead of time, which will limit which documents and codes are included in my code matrix browser, or if I don't have any of them activated, they will all be included. So in this case, since I don't have any documents or code activated, and I click on code matrix browser, it's going to do it for all of my codes and all of my documents. So what you can see here is that we have all of the codes on the Y axis and all of our documents on the X. We'll open them up here a little bit here. So what you have here is a visualization of how often each of these codes, or how frequently each of these codes were used in each of the documents. And you can see in our case that some of these documents weren't coded at all. And some of them quite a bit. Um, and in this particular visualization, unlike the code line browser, you have automatic aggregation. So when I view or show all of my subcodes, you can see approximately how often they each show up in comparison to the others. If I want to, I can, however, also aggregate them by hiding the subcodes, and they're all added up and put on the, on the uh, parent code level. So you can see day-to-day -day issues, uh, if you aggregate all of the subcodes, comes up quite a bit more often than the other codes. If I de-aggregate here, it's a better uh, visualization. So we can see, for example, health. We can follow that across and see that Vincent talks more about health than any of the others. We can tell that because the square here went from blue to purple and is quite a bit larger. The progression is to go from blue to purple to bright red. Uh, and as those colors change, the nodes also get larger. And at any point, I can also hover over any of these, and it will show me exactly how many coded segments that node represents. In this case, uh, overall life satisfaction was coded a single time in the document John. Here we see a node that is slightly larger. If we hover over that, we can see that Kim, uh, we coded that document five times with the code key quotes. So what this is doing is it's giving us a visualization of the entire project, all of my documents, all of my codes, and which ones of those are showing up most often in the various documents. So once again, we can look at the code level, say, who talked the most about friends? And we can see pretty quickly Mary and Grace talked about friendship more often or about their friends more often than some of the others. And to get the exact count, I hover over it four times in the document Mary and four times as well on the document Grace. Um, you can also take advantage of the live connection to the data. So if I want to see these four instances where we coded the document Mary as having to do with friends, all I have to do is double click on that node and the retrieve segments window, those four instances are brought up. So this is one way to do retrievals, for example. Instead of activating a document and then activating a code, you can open up the code matrix browser and go through and say, for example, oh, this is interesting. Joanna uh, talked or mentioned something that we considered significantly positive four times. I'm going to double click on that. And I can very quickly then read what we uh, coded as being significantly positive in that particular interview. Now, there are quite a lot of options as far as how you can uh, customize this particular visualization. The first option is to view this visualization as an Excel table. And what you're going to get then is an Excel table. Rather than having the nodes here, it will actually show you the count, the number of times that significantly positive this code was used in the document Joanna, for example. And we know that's four because we've already looked. Um, but the Excel table will then include a very similar visualization to this, except with the numbers instead of the nodes. 
The next option is to export. And when I go to export, I have the option to export this visualization as an Excel file, as we just talked about, and also as a text document or comma separated value document. The next option that we have is to take a snapshot again. So if there are certain aspects of this that are interesting to us, we can customize that. We can get rid of these documents that, for example, weren't coded and bring in this border and make the visualization exactly as we want it for our snapshot and then take the picture, saving it as a PNG file. The next option is to create a quote matrix based on this code matrix browser. And I'm going to skip over that for now. For more information on that, go to the, uh, the video tutorial that talks about the quote matrix in the mixed methods drop down menu. The next options, the next three go together and they resize the columns. So if you want, if, maybe if you have a lot of documents and you're not that interested in the column headers, you can make them very small so that you can see more of them on your screen. The next option is a medium size. And the last is to show the full length titles, no matter how long they are. The next three options uh, set how these nodes are to be calculated. The size of these nodes right now are based on the total number of codes in the entire uh, data set. So we're figuring the size of this node based on the fact that there are four and the total number of codes in all of the documents is 304. So that's how that node is being uh, figured out as far as the size goes. If, however, we're more interested in just comparing within a column or within a row, rather than basing it on the total number of codes, we have that option. So the first one is calculation of the symbol size based on column. So if I click on that, we can very quickly see within a column which code came up the most often. Uh, for example, in this, in this particular document, key quotes came up the most often. Or in uh, the interview with Millie, we can see recreation came up the most often. You can also base these sizes uh, just on the row. And there you can see uh, with health, for example, health, was, health came up most often in the document John, or in the interview with John. Overall came up the same amount of times in a lot of those. And it's important that you remember when you open the code matrix browser, check to see what your settings are, because if you open it the first time and don't realize that it's uh, based on rows, you'll think that you'll be able to com that you can compare this node to this node, uh, when actually they have a very different number of uh, instances of that code. So always check that. And the standard one is, of course, to uh, calculate the size based on all of the coded segments in your entire project. The next option is to show the actual values. And this is similar to if you would view this uh, code matrix browser as an Excel file. What you're going to do is just click on that option and all of the nodes are then transformed into the numbers that uh, were behind those. So you can either hover over a node to see the number, it's coded segments there, seven, or you can come up, click on the number, and it will then show you the matrix of numbers, the, the matrix of frequencies for how often each of these codes on the y-axis appeared in each of these documents on the x. The next option is to switch back and forth between circles and squares. Um, another option here is to switch to document-based visualization. And what this is doing is it's not going to say how, it's not going to create the node based on how many or how frequently this code appears in the documents. It's just a yes, no. Does this code appear in the document? So if I click on it, there's only one size. There's a yes or no. Did the code significantly positive appear in the first document? No. Did it appear in the second one? Yes. Uh, so it's not comparing the frequency, but rather just whether or not it exists. The next option is to refresh. So if I've done some coding uh, or reactivated or activated different documents, I can click on the refresh button to refresh my, my visualization. 
The next option is again the info button. And because there are so many settings and so many different ways to customize this particular visualization, uh, definitely take advantage of this button to open the uh, manual and be able to review what this code matrix browser is all about and what all the different toolbar options allow you to change. The next option again is the red running man, which lets you close the visualization. And again, the scroll bar that lets you scroll through the documents without losing your labels. As with some of the other visualizations, if you use the windows scroll bar, you're losing those, those labels there on the left side. So that's the code matrix browser. Mm -hmm.